This video is to try and clear up and hopefully get one step closer to resolving what the issue is with these particular boards. Now, this here is a genuine Highland board. Um, this is the first one I bought. I did something wrong on it. I blew out the 24 volt regulator, but I managed to knack the tracks on that. This is the D888. 882 here and I think that's what happened as I, I knackered one of these up I don't know why it's got to this where it's been taken off but but there's something I need to show you so we're going to start off by just getting rid of that for a minute and I'm just going to show you now this is what I'm going to be using for doing these check is not this because it's got a big bust bit on there as can be seen there so that's no good at all uh, this one the, the, they all have the same failing um, because it's got these two pots in here which will make a difference when I'm measuring these pots and bits and pe uh, these resistors and so we can use this one and we are going to try and revive this and uh, this has got on here just same as on this other working one it has marked up amps I don't know how well you can see that from there let's just see marked off amps okay and uh and yes yeah, so we got a little bit of a reference here to what's going on but because we don't have some of the parts here in um you know we, we can't measure any of that but what we can also see as well is on the five volt and uh, no, i'm just looking at that like that but on these five volt i have noticed that you can actually see where it says five volts like here if you can see this one here you can actually see where it says five volts so for those who sometimes make a bit of a pickle about which one see the 5v on there well it should it should say 5v1 because it's 5.1 volt rather than have the extra character you just do 5v1 and we know it's 5.1 volt right so you can see that on there and you can also see it on these ones as well these ones even though it's not that easy to see them um you know the 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 um four one four eights do come in a strip i knew that two at least shown at the five volts yeah but now there's something i wanted to because uh, there's um there's been quite a lot of response to this video and that's great that's, that is great but a few of the things i've heard is talking about va uh, which is voltage amps and how much you should use within this circuit so okay let's look at it like this this circuit is 0 to 30 volts or 0 to 31 volts really but you know on, uh, on a specs it's 0 to 30 volts 2 milliamps uh, to 3 amps so let's say we just take the 30 and the 3 and we times them. now we've got 90 so that's 90 watts of power but this is 90 watts of power in the in the um, ideal world and it doesn't work like that every single thing that we're doing there's going to be a loss every component everything is going to create a loss there's nothing you you've got um, voltage current going through this transistor well there's a heat sink here for a reason and that's because it's going to generate heat this is all lost energy and so if you were to get yourself, let's say, a 90 VA for 90 watts, you're going to find yourself when you're starting to actually use that power, because of the losses, um, you're not actually going to get your 90 VA. So you want to go up a little, a little bit higher. Some people say to use less VA. Well, if that's the case, you're never going to get your power. You, you're not going to get anything for nothing. This is one of the, the, the ways that all this works. Is there's, there's, there's no free lunch here. If you're going to be using power through a circuit, well, this circuit needs power to run. These components all require a little bit of juice just for themselves. So if you were to be really strict, 90 watts, let's say just 90 watts, 90 VA, just call it like that for the argument's sake. Uh, and then you were trying to get 90 watts out of it, you're asking for, you know, one to one. You, 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 you want the, the ideal thing, and it's not going to work like that. So what you want to do then is you want to make sure, because you don't want to go in any higher than 24 volts. So I'm going to show you something now that might start here. Is this is my uh, on AC, and we're going to measure now. Um, I've got them two joined here in the middle because this is two 
12 volt outputs. And so I've joined the two middle ones, which would go into this here, this middle pot here on here, which doesn't actually connect to anything. It's just there to keep it out of the way. If you've got just one straight um, 24 volt output, you wouldn't have that, and that's fine. And you just connect these, either way, it doesn't really matter, into here, because uh, it's AC, so it's alternating. So what we should expect to see then, let's say we're supposed to be between 220 and 240 volts here. So let's just say 230 volts. And that's what I've got this set onto here, 230 volts. This is my uh, variable AC supply. So I can drop it down a bit. Um, or take it up a little bit but for this I'm just going to show you at 240 volts what the actual output here is what you get now this is 12 volts okay 12 volts each side com combined together 24 volts so let's just switch it on if you look at the meter we got about 27 volts there okay and I were to go to 240 we've got 28 volts yeah that's about 240. could actually go up to 265 on this one but we're not going to because we don't need that so we've got more than what it says it says hey we only need 24 volts and that's absolutely true we only need 24 volts and this is the thing about line regulation now as well when this has a circuit put on this it will drop to 24 volts around it's going to be a little bit of difference because the line voltage goes up and down a little bit and so it will go up and down on here a little bit now when it comes to being regulated normally the bigger transformer the better the regulation yeah because you're not trying to it, it, it's like if you've got yourself a little one uh, a thousand cc car and you're driving it around boom, full blast everywhere because you know you you want your full speed out of it everywhere but that engine's only just designed for it uh, it's, it's going to run into problems you're going to you know, so I'm just going to turn the voltage off that. I just wanted to show that for now. Somebody said something about the strain. You don't go above 24 volts going in. That's what it asks for here, strictly 24 volts. So you don't go above it. And the reason why that is, is because by the time you get this converted into DC, if you wanted to quickly do the calculation on that, just times your 24 by 1.414, and that will give you around about 33, 34 volts. And that's what you need for this circuit because you're going to lose a little tiny bit. Remember, you're already going to get 31 volt stops, but it requires that extra to do everything else on the board. So 24 volt stops. If you have under the amount of VA that you, you need, it will pull it down. And when it's pulling it down, if your current, if your circuit requires that much and it starts pulling down the line regulation, oh, that means that you, you're not going to have your 24 volts anymore it's going to be dropping down dropping out a bit and as you're using circuitry that doesn't want that to be happening uh you'll find well you what you're going to find is you're not going to have the output that you want no that that will be the main thing of it you just won't have the output that you want now there's something else i've noticed about the circuit and i've let me just put that out of the way there the camera's getting knocked about everything let me just connect this in this is our 24 volts going in alternating current now you want to run this you know normally you, you need a load on it really to be honest with you but uh you, you just keep it in always have a heat sink on your main output pass transistor like i said when I, I i went over the boards and what i found you've got to make sure that you got these uh, in 4148s correct and you haven't got the 5 volt one in the place. How do you find that out? Well, what you'd do is you'd have a, a power supply and you'd run it up to, because you're looking for 5 volts, you go up slowly, but to go up the 5 volts, your current limit, because you don't want to pull a lot of current through this, so you could just current limit, so let's say, I don't know, 25 milliamps, something like that. And then as it's going up um, to the 5 volts and it just starts going over the 5 volts, you'll see it starts taking current and it's at that 5 volt there you can see then you're on the 5 volt thing um, the other diodes they're not going to work like that and you can actually yeah, you can test them different to that anyway for the forward and, and the, sorry because they, they are just literally high speed switching diodes uh, they don't have the, uh, the Zena effect and that's what you're going to be looking for on your 5 volt ones so these are all incorrect and you can actually see like I say on these diodes here you can see where it says 5 volts um, on the other ones it's not very easy to tell them at all 
on here, this makes a difference to the value of this. So let me just put it a bit closer to you and see on here. So yeah, this, uh, this value here is 270K. This should adjust the value and you should be able to see as you adjust this, the value of this change. On this it works and all of these ones, the, 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 these are the original Highland, right? But this isn't and, and this makes no difference across here. Again, this one makes no difference across here. They are different. Again, like the, you know, these are, these are uh, Jayco. These are Chong. Uh, this is whatever it's called. And this one's on here is another one. It's very similar sounding, but it is a different. Uh, and you can almost see as well that on the sides of these, it almost looks like it's, well, it looks like it's just weird on the side, but on this one, it looks a lot more straight cut, a lot more, but it just looks like it's, I don't know, correct. That one looks like it's all sort of blown out a little bit as well. So let me show you, let me show you um, on here because we can still see this cut. Uh, right, so let's just pop this out of here for a second and just turn this up to here. I'm going to show you the difference when this uh, when this turns. Now, all the other resistors are all okay, from what I can tell. They, they all seem to be okay. It's a bit harder to check the capacitors, but I think that this is going to make a big difference because this is how you get to tune the low voltage. But this isn't. This you know this. this the actual thing works. I took one out of another pack. So I got another four of these. Well, four of the Duff ones anyway, so far. It works. Yeah, it, it is 100K. And that's what it's supposed to be. It's 100K. It's a little bit above about 103K. And it goes down to, you know, just a couple of few ohms. I'm not sure why it's not working on those. But let me show you on this one anyway. Now, this doesn't need to be on for this. And it's not because it's the, uh, the, the things are off there. The connector. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to put this. Where's me little uh, twiddly D? Let me just put that on one side. Doesn't matter about positive or minus. Now mine should be set. Oh, come back in. Mine should be set for about 28k. I think it's supposed to be. If I can actually get these to go on here. There you go, about 20 odd, 20 odd K, right? And if I were to adjust this around, let me just get my connection. If I were to adjust this around, I can go up and I can go down. Yep. Now, if I do the same on this one, shut that out of the way. If I am to do the same on here, Oh, let me get that in there. See now on that one, look. 20, it's 200 odds. Uh, let's just do that. And it doesn't matter how, it just started clicking 10 into the right. So by rights, we should have gone down a bit like this. Sorry, because I'm not got like these on here probably. But it doesn't matter how much I twist this. I just can't even keep going down for a bit, even though it's not, uh, it just stays the same. 268. And this is on a genuine board. But, I'm not quite sure what else is going on here at the moment. I mean, everything seems like it's okay. But there's a possibility I got these messed up. There is a possibility I need to snip them out and try them. I've got replacements, so I can uh, replace that anything I need to. Uh, but, and if we look again on here, this is one of the, the ones built up. And if we just do the same thing here, and it is the same across the other ones. I've checked them all. So there we go, we've got that one on there again. It's at its full, you know, 270K. It don't matter, that's clicking, so I turn the right way around, and it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. On here, this works, this is my worker. For using less VA than the board would require, you under full load, well, that, that's going to unbalance things. You want to get what you need, 90 VA, let's say, with a bit of overhead. 
and what you'll find for that is a 120 VA transformer 12 by 12 will do ideal or just a 24 volt straight output will do ideal now somebody also said about the current now we see in the manual yeah it says absolutely a uh, 3 amp maximum and I think that's because if you were to try and pull a heavier load through this I've had 4 amps out of mine if you and that's at a lower voltage low so I wasn't going at 90 watts but I did have four amps out um, briefly um, it didn't stop I just didn't want to keep pulling it like that because the circuit's not really made for that I'm using 12 volt bulb uh, trying to get um, you know 55 watts out of it because it's a 55 volt bulb and it would run to four amps now <laughs> Again, a lot of this is going to depend on your transformer. If you're using one of the old types of transformers, the I and E, E and I types, uh, you know, you might need slightly higher. This is a toroidal, so I've, I, I, I lose less eddy currents out of here. It's more efficient than one of the IEs, EIs, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I use them. You over-engineer it a little bit, and it's better. If we were going to put 28 volts nominal, direct once it's got a little bit of droppage on it because the circuit sits on it then that would be too much for this it'd be too much for these these are only good for 36 volts uh 18 either way 36 um as a full swing but that's ideal because it's just less than that really once we go into dc around the board and i'm going to try and work out what it is i'm just going to look to see if i put any of these in the wrong way around so I'm going to just take out, because there's only two 5 volts, so I'm going to take out two 5 volts and just make sure that they're correct. If they're not, that uh, means you know, money, uh, two of the others are wrong. So first one's here, it's going to be here on the, where are we? Yeah. Putting a little bit of solder on there just makes it easier to... Get it out. Tabs are there. They're the little uh, leads. I'm just going to pull that out a bit straighter. So hopefully, when I warm that, it'll just drop out. Hopefully. down like this I do actually have a piece of apparatus to help me to help me do this just check that I'm on the right the right thing here I am another one of those things where patience uh, is really a virtue I don't want to damage it see I'm trying to do it as gentle as possible so I don't want to damage it so I need to be able to test it. Almost through. Come on. Pull it long ways, a little tiny bit, and then just get it from the back here. There we go. You've got to be really careful not to damage the tracks. Sometimes when I'm doing things like this, I don't even I don't even bother what I'll do, so I just cut it the right thing just to just to tack it on top. So let's have a little uh, let's have a little play with this then. No. All right. So now I'm going to set this now to um, I'm going to set it to uh, six volts. All right. And I'm going to set the current uh, to now. If I just move that across, so you can see on this side, six volts here. Yeah. I'm going to set the current. Oh, I don't know. Thirty milliamps. Thirty uh, milliamps. There we go. So that's what that's set to there. Yeah, so basically, when I turn this on now, what we should do is put this into the uh, the voltage uh, load part, which I'm going to. I'm just going to move this across. So you see where it says uh, six point. I can now drop this down here. If we go uh, the stripe part to negative, 
the cathode and then the anode to the positive. What you'll see on the screen over there is a, is a straight through connection, right? There it is up to 30 milliamp, I'm reducing and it's pulling the, it's pulling the power down. But if I do it this way, nothing should happen. Nothing. Now, what we're going to be hoping is that as I start turning this up, we'll start seeing the current go across because we get to the Zener voltage. Okay, so around about now, we should start seeing the current going up. And there we go. As soon as we get to the 5.1, it lets in full current and we'd limit it down to 30. So that is a 5.1 volt Zener diode. So that's in the correct place. That's good news. And all we're going to do now is get the other one out. Okay, so on the other side of here, we've got our five in a row. Turns it across, five in a row, so our Zener's here. Damaging the trace, and that's no good. At least heat up that solder. There we go. So now we're going to do the same thing with this one. Uh, again, we can see we get a dead short on it to make sure that we do have it not working one way. So this should just pull the voltage in the, the current that go up, the voltage come down. Okay, voltage up, current down. Uh, voltage down, <laughs> current up. And now this, this way round, we're on 4.9 volts. So this way round, correctly, and now if we, uh, we start just going up there again. Five. Okay, so it's gone over and that's it. We got, it's just gone slightly over there to do that 5.2. But again, it's doing its job. So we can say that they are in the correct place on that. Okay guys, so we've gotten this far. Um, and uh, I know this is the one that should work anyway. I'm not bothered with the um, voltage regulator there just for a moment. And we're just going to nick these things off here. Oh, yeah, we're just going to nick these things off here. Um, the connections from here and also the pots. So I've got a 10 turn pot on my voltage. And there should be another one kicking about. I will find in a second uh, for this. Uh, the LED indicator on here is actually on the board. Something I'll probably make a difference, uh, a change to. As and when. Uh, let's take these out of here. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is because I just wanted to show you that. Well, this is it. You're going to get to see with me, and we're going to wind up the voltage on this as well, and just see, uh, just see if we got any problems from there from the get-go. Um, what I mean by wind up the voltage is just turn it up slowly. Okay, so we're going to get this on. Could do with the... Oh, here's the current. It's already pre-made up, you see, for the other one. So I'll try it in here, because I know that these are the correct way around as well. So, you know, if we go to the right, it turns the current up. and we go to the left, it turns the current down. But I can't remember if it should be like this. I presume it's supposed to be like this. Uh, and it's still anti-clockwise anyway, no matter, which, no matter which way you do it. So let's get this in here. I'm going to turn that down in the background. So, I don't know. <laughs> SDR radio. All right, guys. All right, so there we go then. So I've got a camera over there, just looking at what we're going to we're going to look for this current jump. If it starts going up too high as I uh, as I start um, putting up that power there. Now, let me just check that we got that socket on. There we go. Little indicator has come on now. I'm hoping you can see that. All right, we're on zero volts. Uh, we need an output monitor. So we're going to put our voltage on here. Just going to see that. Make sure I don't have too much of that light in it. There we go. That's for DC. Um, because it's in auto range, it will jump about a bit as it's as it's going up, as it's um, doing the power. 
going up the voltage. Change the range. Uh, now we want positive out and negative out. I'm hoping that's going to fit in there. It does. That should just fit in there. I've checked as well, and now the vo the um, resistance is adjusted. When I probe here on resistance and I alter this, this now adjusts. Right, let's give it a go then. There you go, fingers crossed. So, all right, so we're gonna go down with the power on there. Nothing untoward going on on the uh, current side of things. And as I go up to 20 volts, 40, by rights, if there was a problem on that, you'd have probably seen that already but that is actually going up in current isn't it that's going up in current the way it shouldn't be going up in current let me just adjust that and just let's just look at that again we're watching that current going up we don't want it to go up i mean that's a three amp dial all right so as we're turning this up and you watch that current start going up that's when we know there's a problem all right so we're just gonna we're just going to discontinue that test now because we know there's a problem. We know there is a problem because the current's going up the way it's going up. That was creeping up 500 milliamps going up towards an amp. And just for having that sat there doing that, that should not happen. So I'm just going to put it down again just out of curiosity. I know I can look back on the video, but I, was, I, I wasn't looking at this at all. I um, wasn't looking at this at all. So I don't know what happened over there, so let me just take that up again. We are actually getting that adjustment up. Oh, as soon as that current starts moving, I'm going to... So that's, that says it's on 6 volts, but it's dropping. Oh, but look at the current going up. See, that's no good at all. No, no that's no good at all. So we have definitely got some major issue there, and um, we're not going to continue the test. Right. I'll have to get another good look at it and see what's going on. I've just noticed this glaring mistake. It's here, it's not working, it's just uh, shorting directly. And if you look closely, these are the two original boards. And if you look closely at those with a keen, sharp eye, you'll see straight away that one of these caps is the wrong way around. These big old caps here. Negative, negative. I've got a positive side here. And even though I only took it up to a few volts, um, you can all, almost see, if you look at the top of the caps there, you can see one sort of pushed down in, and the other one's puffed up very slightly. You can see it more from looking at the top, I suppose. So we're gonna take this out, we're gonna replace it, and, um, and try this one again. And then, um, hopefully, we'll have a better result. We're gonna take that off there. And we're going to hope that we haven't done any more damage. Yeah. look at what damage we may or may not have done to this cap. Oh, where is it? Let's just, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, what am I doing? I'm on resistance. <sighs> I just stand the wrong door. Oh, blimey, sometimes I wonder how I get up in the morning without hurting myself. Ah, uh, okay, that's having a bit of a 
2.7 millifarad. Well, that's not the correct capacitance. <laughs> uh, it's not correct at all, so we need another cap for that. No, I did have that. nicely. Let's just turn that off for a minute. Alright, now this of course is bodged here but hey it'll do the job and we're going to clamp this back up move these bits out of the way let's shift that out of the way let's shift everything out of the way uh, that we want this, we want this. Um, we can put this in for the voltage, a 10 turn pop, just for more accuracy on the voltage. We're going to put that in there like that. We're now just going to connect that back into there. I'm not even going to bother looking at the board again because if I didn't see that until today. <laughs> I didn't see that until today, but never mind. Right, uh, now we want to um, we want to check what voltages are coming out. So that I believe is ground. That I believe is positive. Quick little check on the board out. Yep, it is. Okay. Got that turned all the way down, so it's starting off with zero. Oh, quick, quick, just a quick clamp of this because. Uh, it does say, even though it's not pulling any current, let's just ignore it, let's just put the clamp on there. And uh, I'm just going to eject that, stop the spring from tiring. Right, down we go. Um, I'm expecting to see, that's on zero, so I'm just going to turn it up one part of a turn. Alright, so as I start going up in the voltage, what we don't want to see is that current going up the way it was before. And so far we're not. So far everything seems to be okay. Alright, so we're on what, 200, 180, 200 volts, 240. Okay, so we just sit up that. This is on at two and a half volts. We seem to be going up, we seem to be going up, we seem to be going up. We're going up, we're going up, we're going up. Very nice. We're going up. We're going up, we're going up, and we're going to get to our 31 volt limit, and that is the limit there. So now on this one it seems, I'm thrilled because that means there's another one here that works now. I'm going to go back, and here we have down to zero, and this is where I can use my little trimmer here. And just that down to as close to zero as possible. Just got to get it to sit on it. So that's going up. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we want to go down this way. Just uh, bring that down. Let it catch up with itself. Because that is quite high, really. Ah, right, I didn't press play on the other one. I didn't press... Uh... Look at this, look, we can bring this all the way down. Alright, let's just see where that settles. So that's zero volts. And then when we go back up the voltage, we should get the 31 volts. It was 31.5 before, wasn't it? So let's just turn this up. Just turn it up, 31.455. There we go, and that's locked. And hopefully we go straight back down again to zero. Oh, this is quite a bit of resistance on these, just turning this part. And I don't mean a pun of res you know, when I say it. I just, it's just quite difficult to turn it. 
Oh, let me just see what that settles to. Oh, dear. There's, hopefully that should go back down to zero. No, it doesn't, so we can just tweak it down a little tiny bit. Get a few more little pieces of that part. And, uh, but then I'll be sort of like just happy with that. However this turns, I'm just going to leave it maybe just to warm and do. Is there any type of warmth going in there? I can't feel anything. So it would have probably been okay, but as soon as you pull a load on this, of course, then they'll, uh, there'll be a problem. So, okay, we can say, well, this is good because now there's two working ones of these. And did you know with two working ones of these, you can actually join the outputs together because they're linear? Mm-hmm. So now we can have up to 0 to 60 volts at 3 amps, or 0 to 30 at 6 amps. At least that's what you're supposed to be able to do with it, being linear. Be cool if you could. Anyway, right. So now we know that works, so I'm just going to back this off. Back it down to zero, because uh, that's good. And now we're going to start doing some comparison in resistances across the boards and bits and pieces. I don't want to do too much while it's on because if you start putting stuff across and it makes any of these become uh, circuits, you can just blow them up anyway, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know enough not to make that happen while the power's in. But we can certainly take some measurements when the power's off and not connected. So we give a go at that now.